But at this point, Luke is in way too deep to even turn back. Like, what's he going to do? One day say, oh, I want to be with the demigods again and think that he's just going to get away with it? He literally has Kronos infecting his body. Yeah, and also, like, even if even if they could somehow get Kronos out of his body, it's like, you have killed people. Yeah. Like, you, you have killed, like, kids that like that you know you have like destroyed people's lives like you've terrorized and traumatized everyone that you ever met whoever loved you mm -hmm. and so it's like what did you think was going to happen you would just like be like oh i'm sorry i made a mistake and it's like i don't care <laughs> like, he was terrorizing mortals about aboard the queen andromeda just to be probably monster food um it's one of those irredeemable like it, it makes me think back to anakin again because that the scene that is where you know that Anakin has reached a path that is completely irredeemable is when he goes to the younglings. And, you know, it's the one that gets clipped all the time of, of the youngling coming out of hiding, like, Master Luke, or not Mas Master Anakin. And then he, like, draws his, his lightsaber, and you're just like, <laughs> what? Yeah, and Anakin is a good example for that kind of thing that people with, like, people like that I think they just like delude themselves into believing that they could somehow save them mm -hmm. or that if they just like talk to them they could somehow figure out a way to help them like that's basically annabeth through the first five books yeah. with Luke, not wanting to just admit that there's no going back and like the only way that you can do that is to like lessen the the like absolute horrible things that they do to other people that hurt them and mm -hmm. so the way that happens in percy is that Annabeth like finds herself downplaying the things that he does to Percy because that's the only way that she could possibly think that is she downplays the fact that he's tried to murder him when he was 12 and when he was 13 and when he was 14 and when he was like all those all those ages but like you have to you have to downplay that stuff in the same way that with like Anakin like uh Padme sits there and listens to him be like I'm sad that my mom was hurt so I just murdered a bunch of innocent beings who didn't hurt her didn't kill her yeah um, yeah the sand people yeah like he just murdered an entire like he just did a genocide small, his first genocide <laughs> he did like a low low-key genocide like because it's a small group of people but he he just did genocide against a group of people that in fact that Padme heard him say that and saw him do that and was still there like there's something good in him that i can save and it's like no there isn't if he was able to just kill a bunch of people like that with his like powers that he's been given because he was angry then there's no limits to the kind of stuff he's willing to do to other people and that's that's like the whole thing with percy like annabeth doesn't want to admit that if luke is willing to take percy out into the forest by himself to kill him in the books or try to convince him to join him and then try to kill him if he doesn't join him in in like the tv show version either way he's he's like willing to do that to this kid then he's willing to do anything yeah if you're willing to do something like that to a 12 year old kid then there's no limits to what you are willing to do to people that you see as like your peer like it's the same thing with like kylo like Kylo Ren, like one thing that I liked a lot about Star Wars with um, the sequel trilogy, like why the sequel trilogy is my favorite one out of all of them, is that like they have the moment with Kylo or Ben in the first movie where um, Han offers to like, just like come home with me. Yeah. And it's like a thing of like, I'm not saying that everything that you've done so far is okay. Like he also murdered like 20 of his closest friends yeah, and yeah. At, at, at the Jedi Academy and everything. So it's not like he didn't do anything horribly wrong, but it's also a thing of like, at least I can stop this. We can like stop this here so it doesn't progress any further than it's gone already. And, you know, Kylo uh, stabs him in the chest and kills him. And so like they do that moment of like somebody wanting to give them a chance to like pull themselves back in the first movie instead of in the later movies. Um, so I like, that's why I liked that one better, that they just, like, got that one done and over with pretty early on. Yeah. And, like, yeah. I think that's why I like the Percy Jackson stuff, is that Percy realizes that because of what Luke does to him at the end of the first book. Mm -hmm. And, but the hard part about it is that nobody else does. Especially with how they did it on the show, that 
Annabeth isn't there on the show when Grover almost gets like sucked into Tartarus. Mm -hmm. And so he sees how scary that is and he knows what that what that means. And yeah. they know that it's a really bad thing down there, even if he doesn't fully understand how bad it actually is, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. That's something really scary. And he knows that Luke is the one that wanted to do that to him. Yeah. And yeah. so like realizing that somebody wanted to like that's why I like the TV show version better. Is that like because by the time they confront Luke, him and Annabeth have known for days by that point that he wanted to like send him down there and they were just able to stop it just by like pure like coincidence. But yeah. he knew yeah. for like they knew for days by that point that he was he wanted to do that, that that was his plan. And so when you know that about a person, it's like everything else about them you start looking at and like thinking about again and being like, who is this person actually? Because I thought he was being nice to me when he gave me these shoes. I thought he was giving me something to help me, but it was actually giving it to me so he could kill me. And yeah. um, it just makes you like relook at every single thing they've ever said to you. And that's basically what Percy was doing, the TV show version, and Annabeth for that matter, in the days, in like the day or whatever before they actually went out to talk to him. Mm -hmm. And like the way that, that happens on the show, I always like more because because I always picture that as like Annabeth and and Percy hoping that they were be that they were wrong about him. Yeah, hoping that that was like their moment of hoping that they could get him to like stop what he was doing now and not have it go any further. Um, but he's not listening to anything that Percy says. He's just like, no, we're gonna leave. Yeah, and he's like I don't want to leave. <laughs> what are you talking about? I just got back to camp. I like it here. I don't want to leave. That was like them like testing him. Mm -hmm. They wanted him to be good. And then it was like, well, never mind. Yep. That's not going to work this time. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, it, it's a theme in like literature. We talked about Gollum recently. Gollum is yeah. another example of, you know, this is somebody who I really identify and I want to save them. And I do think that for some of the demigods, maybe that's some of the motivation is I can see where Luke is coming from. All of them are similarly neglected or sometimes even emotionally abused by their parents, uh, their god parents. And so a lot of them can resonate with some of the things he's saying. But um, I, I feel like maybe some of them are thinking like, you know, someone says the right thing to me and this could happen to me too. So I like to think he could be saved because then I can be saved. Yeah, and it's also a thing of, like, it just is how it is that even if you hear that someone has done something horrible, like, that you know is really bad to somebody, that even if you don't care about them, you just know that it's bad. Mm -hmm. There's this, this thing does happen to people that if you aren't, like, almost directly seeing it or experiencing it, it's people can very easily kind of, like, separate themselves from it so that it doesn't, it just, they don't let themselves actually think about what that really means. Yeah. And so a lot of the kids at camp are like that, where they just want to believe that Luke could be better. Even though they hear these stories about how Luke keeps trying to kill everybody, they're not directly experiencing it some of the time at least. And so it makes them want to hang on to like the image they had of him in the first place. All those are like coping mechanisms that people have. Mm -hmm. But it, it does mean that one day when people figure it out that we we should be allowed to be like, I told you so. Yeah, we don't. <laughs>